So hello and welcome back to another video. Um, today I'm using a new device that's quite cool, and so all my pen and stuff is not set up. So that's a bit unfortunate. But we're gonna do what we what we have here, and that's what we have here. So we're just gonna do some convergent and divergent series. For that. So this is we finished our polar stuff, and now we're going to series stuff, and this is infinite series. So we're looking at convergent and divergent series. And although this may seem very easy, and most of the easiest things in calculus at least convergent and divergent, finding out this convergent and divergent series part is. It's very important for the harder stuff, the Taylor series part that we're going to look at in the future. So it's very important. And uh, don't skip on it. So, it's always very good. So, uh, let's get started real quick, and I'll just give a quick example here. So let's have a series 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus one sixteenth and plus on and on and off. And what what can we generalize this for? Yeah. Well, I'll show you what we can generalize this in the future. But first we have this series here. This is our first example and our second series. Um we'll do it right. How about we have one plus two plus four plus eight plus sixteen plus on and on and off. And you may notice there's a key difference between the two. This series on the top, this is what's known as a convergent series, and I'll explain that in a bit. And it's this series in the bottom, this is known as a divergent series. Divergent series. And what's the difference between them? Well, this convergent series, it converges to a property, hence the name. So this growth is like a logarithmic fu function, ln of x maybe, and what we do is we have this. We converge. And infinity will convert to this value here. We have another one, so like a limit, where we converge to this value. The limit converges to this value. And this is just the series converges to this value. We don't know what this arbitrary value is, but we know that it converges to some value. And in the future, in a few minutes, I'll show you um, how we generalize the convergent and divergent series. So next up, we have our divergent series. What is that? Well, like this. It's where we have a series, we have one here, so two, four, six, and we exponentially grow, and we don't converge to a value. We diverge. We diverge from the zero value here. We just go on and on and on, up and up and up, and we diverge. So we can see the two convergent and divergent functions, so it's very simple, uh, but we can generalize this with the formulas. So you may already know your series formula, which looks a bit like this. This is white. We know our series from now, which is the this big E here, alright? And we start at a value, so it's n is equal to 1, and we end at infinity, so it's an infinite series. And all we do here is we call these two series, these two series, we call them these two. These are geometric series. Geometric series. So what we're looking at in this video mainly is convergent and divergent geometric series. And we'll look at this harmonic series and stuff in the future, but in Taylor series, the main series we're going to go over is geometric series. Look at the harmonic series, all alternating series, stuff like that, in a, in a moment, but actually. But right now we're going to look at geometric series, but our main convergent divergent stuff is in here. We know how our domain here is harmonic series diverges and converges and stuff, but we're not going to talk about that. That's a very long proof for our next video. But first, we're going to look at this convergent and divergent geometric series. So you see here, we have this big E, this is our classic notation. What we're going to do is we can all generalize these f series into a form, where a1 is our starting term times our ratio to the n minus 1 power. Okay? And this is also equal to a1 over 1 minus r. And this is a fun fact for you. This is the sum of a uh, geometric series. So this series the sum of the others. We'll do an example for this in a moment. So here we can generalize our first one. First one. This one. I'm doing green. Because it's the same color. Do it as before. We can generalize our first series as this. Generalize our first series as what's our starting term? Well, it's still going to be the sum. And one minus one. Do this. What's our starting term? Our starting term's one. What's our ratio? We're going from this to this, we multiply by one half, times one half. 
going from this to this one half, going from this to this one half, going from this to this one half. So it's one half and minus one. So what's the use of doing this? Well, first things first, we gotta check before we find out what the what use is. So let's say we have the term one. We start at the first term. So this is our first term. So there's just one, right? And you think this is zero powers one. And this is one half, this is one fourth, yeah. So on and on, this is the correct series. So what is the point of this? Well, I forgot to mention here, that's purposeful, uh, that this geometric series, this converges, converges, if our r, our ratio, is between negative 1 to 1. Okay? And there's a reason for this. Well, actually, it's greater or equal to negative 1 and 1. Uh, no, no, actually, just not equal to. Because if we do that, we're not. Um, it converges from negative 1 to r to 1. And the reason for that is, if you notice here in our second series, which I'll make a series right now, you'll notice that our ratio, we go from here to here, we multiply by 2. And that doesn't fit this, and it diverges. So, smart mathematicians a long time ago, they generalized this formula out that a geometric series converges from negative 1 to r to 1 because if our ratio is like 1.1, then it exponentially increases and it diverges. It doesn't converge to a value. So, knowing this, we'll also do this one. This is going to be equal to the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of our starting term is one cell, but this is two in this one. And you'll notice here that these are our r's. This here, this is our r. And this is also our r. And these, this r is less than one, and greater than one, negative one. So this one, this one also converges. We use our generalization formula to know that this converges. And we can, we, from the start we saw that this converges, we made a kind of a sketch here to show our growth. And it con clearly converges, has a limit on it. And this one just diverges. This one diverges. And you'll find that this g generalization is very good. We find that this is true using our two examples of the geometric series. And now, um, going a bit off topic here of the geometric series, we are going to do this. We are going to make another one. We are going to attempt to solve our series that we created before. So at our first one, it was 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth on and on and on. And we have our second one, which is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus on and on and on. Right? So, what is this? Well, this first one is going to be plus plus. This is going to be the sum. Sum. n equals 1 to infinity of, well not plus anymore. But, I'll just write the plus here. So, usually you see this in this notation. Or it's going to be 1 times our 1 half and minus 1. Right? And then this one, we generalize this as this. So, 1 times 2 and minus 1. Right? And plus here. And, we know that from the last one, our sum, what is this? Well, we generalize this as this. So, now we want to find our sum. And a lot of times you ask questions about what does this series sum up to? And you'll find that we can actually find what this whole plus 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 thing is equal to. As long as it's converged. Because if it diverges, it's just infinity, right? Because we have this and this, this, and then we plus and plus bigger and bigger things until we get out of our range. So we have this thing here, right? And it's 1 times 1 half n minus 1, right? And what well, this is equal to? Well, this is what we found is a1 over 1 minus r, which is equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 half, which is going to be 1 over 1 half, which, if we do this, inside the outside loop, is 1 over, which is actually going to be equal to 2, right? Because the inside of the outside loop, and here we can clearly see that. A 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth, and this is already 1.5, and then we keep adding smaller and smaller things, but then all of these small things we add up, we get to 1, 2. So what we found here, this sum, what this really means is we converge to 2. So this line that I draw for the C, this is y equals 2. So our series converges to y equals 2. We're going to do the same thing here, but there's really no point. 
Because if we do it, we have 1 over 1 minus 2, which is equal to 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. And we can't have a series that sums up to negative 1, can I? We can't. And that's the reason here, uh, because it's divergent. We can't actually find that with this, because it goes on and on and on. Add and add more things, it's just actually equal to the infinity. So if it divergent the series equals to infinity, and that's what we do. So that's it for this video. Um, geometric series converge and diverge it. Not going to go as planned. Promised. We're going to actually do our harmonic series in the next video. Because in this chapter, we just go over convergent and divergent geometric series. So hopefully you learned something from this video. And uh, that's it. So see you in the next one. Bye-bye.